Hello everyone, Ryan Archer at West Ham Fan TV. Now, West Ham are famous for many things, but one thing we are famous for is our academy. Uh, the Academy of Football is uh, known worldwide. We've produced some absolute talent down the years. Uh, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the man who's returned to the club and he's uh, now part of uh, the academy and bringing through the youth, Kenny Brown. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm really well, thanks, mate. You? Yeah, I'm really, really well, mate. I was just saying to you off camera, Get your boots, mate. We need a striker. You're looking well. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I, I, obviously I was really prolific in my day. But um, <laughs> well, you did get that winner against United, mate. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. I don't know. I don't know uh, whether that holds up. But um, no, there's far too much running involved nowadays. <laughs> but listen, mate, I've got to say it. Welcome back to the club. Welcome home. You yeah, can, lovely. How Thank you. Finding you. It? Yeah, it's good to be back. It's been um, it's been a whirlwind sort of three weeks. Um, started obviously in uh, the first day back in January, um, but every day has been different. Every day I've loved every minute of it. Um, some really good people already in the club. Um, a lot of good work already been done. So I've, I'm in actually a really healthy. I've come into a healthy position. The club's in a good place. The academy's in a very good place. So um, I'm just here to hopefully uh, help it move along a little bit more. Yeah, I mean look. We all know West Ham's in your blood. Your dad's a, a legend at the football club, FA Cup winner, European Cup winners, Cup winner. Um, yeah, you obviously play for the club as well. Seventy nine appearances over five years. Uh, we all know you love the football club, mate. So you must be absolute buzzing to be back. Yeah, when it when I had the first conversations and then going through the interview process and obviously um, the the thought of uh, returning back to the club, especially in the academy. You know, I've spent a lot of time now in academy football and um, I always felt that uh, I had something to give back to the club at some point. Obviously, as seasons go on and the more you, you know, I was settled at my other club, um, you know, you just think that opportunity isn't there. But um, fortunately enough, you know, they decided to, to go with me. And, and like I say, from the, from the moment I've walked in, uh, um, it feels like coming home. It feels it feels right. Um but I've got to say, you know, like I said before, I'm coming into a, in, in a good place. Um, it's been uh, there's been a lot of change over probably two, three seasons. A lot of hard work's gone into it, and you know, I'm I'm now coming into that. So, um, listen, it's it's obviously a, for me. I'm very proud to to be coming back and and working for such a for such a club that I love. Yeah, I mean. We, uh, you, you, three years experience at Dagenham Redbridge as well, but nearly six years at Millwall. We poached you from across the river. Um, so you are obviously uh, the assistant head of coaching for, is it the under nines to under 14s? Yeah. So, um, basically, there's a head of coaching at every academy in the country, um, because of the, the enormity of the role and how, how big the role is, and, and obviously the different facets in it. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the cat ones because they have, um, um, obviously more staff, more players, uh, more contact time, uh, are basically split in the role. Um, so that's the, the route that West Ham uh, have gone down. Uh, and like I say, so I've come in, I'm working closely with Callum, who, who was the head of coaching or who is the head of coaching here. He's going to be looking after the 15s to under 23s and, and I'm looking after sort of the pre-academy under nines up to the under 14s. Yes, I mean, it's quite important because you're sort of at the start of their career when they, they first joined West Ham and, and then you pass them on to the next age group. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, you know, it's, it's really good. If someone had told me maybe 10, 15 years ago you'd be working with kids, then um, I would have given up because I just couldn't see myself having the patience or the desire to do that. It was always men's football, first team football, where it's obviously results driven. That's how I, when you come out of playing... You know, that's all you really know. But uh, I think the way I am, the, the the sort of person I am, and the more time I've spent in academies, uh, in and around the younger players, there's so much reward in that to, to see them develop, see them grow as, as not obviously not just as players, but as, as young men. Um, there's not a better feeling. Uh, and, you know, like you say, I had, I had really three really good years as academy manager at Dagenham. 
uh, best part of six years at Millwall in a similar role, uh, and and now continuing it at, at West Ham. So I've been very fortunate, but I have worked hard for it, and uh, I think that I'm I'm pretty good at what I do. But like I said, there, you know, the rewards there uh, are massive when you're working with with young, you know, young boys who are are keen to play football, you know, the energy they have, smiles on their faces. It's what football's all about. That's nah, brilliant, mate. Obviously, uh, there's a few other ex-players involved in the um, in the under-23s and the youth. And obviously, you've got Mark Robson back at the club now, Kevin Keane, Stevie Potts, um, and a few others. You know, it's great. What's it like to be around them and working with them? Yeah, brilliant. You know, I was out watching the 18s this morning, so Kev's there. You know, Mark Phillips, um, you know, people who I know. And like you say, I played with Kev, got a lot of respect for him. Uh, I've always kept in touch with Kevin over the years since playing, you know, very similar probably backgrounds with football in family. Um, but yeah, he's, you know, you watch him work. He's He's got to be, you know, I think West Ham are very lucky to have Kev as part of the 18s and leading, the, heading up the 18s group. I don't think there's many better in the country. Um, so you see him work, you see how he, uh, you know, how he goes about his business, and he, like I say, he's, we're all in the same office because the, the under nine to eighteen are on on the uh, obviously back at Chadwell Heath. Um, Robbo, Potsy are, are over at Rush Green with the first team, twenty threes. But I went there on on Monday when they played, and it was nice seeing them and, and meeting up with them again. Um, yeah, it's, it, you know, it, it doesn't seem. That long ago that we that we were all playing together, but obviously it was a number of years. Um, but when you see them, they're all they're all really good people, really good football people as well. Um, and like I say, I think West Ham have done really well in in the recruitment of them them type of staff. Yeah. Now, uh, have you had a chance to uh, meet up with David Moyes yet? Because he he obviously we've seen this season. I mean, we'll talk a little bit about um, the experience that he's giving uh, the youngsters, but. Have you had a chance to sit down with Moyes? Does he give you any sort of ideas of what he wants? No, I won't have that um, um, that luxury, I suppose. You know, my sort of, um, you know, again, Ricky Ricky Martin obviously heads up the academy. Has been been superb for the t with the short time I've been in the club, um, and it made me feel very welcome. Uh, access to a to you know, like I say, twenty threes, eighteens. So yes, I'm predominantly my role is nines to fourteens, um, but I'm not just restricted to them. Uh, but no, I, I, I doubt I'll have an, um, a sit down with with obviously David Moyes. Um, I'm not. I'm a little bit further down the ladder for there, and um, but I'm happy with that. Um, he's got enough on his plate, and I'm sure that <laughs> you know, like you say, uh, he's. he's um, it's a busy time, especially now. Everyone's looking at, at the transfer window. Um, to see what sort of business is going to be done. Uh, but listen, he's doing a fantastic job, both, you know, obviously himself and the, and the, the backroom staff uh, doing really well. 23s are, are obviously top in the league. 18s, I think, are joint top. Um, and we've got uh, some good young players coming through the system. So it's, it's a really healthy time to, you know, to be a West Ham supporter and to, to obviously work here as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, also, I mean, from even from the age group that you you uh, coach, do you sort of I don't, I don't know how to say it not not give them hope that they will one day get into the first team? Do you, do you sort of try to drill it into them to say, look at players like Declan Rice, Ben Johnson, all these players, and say, look, if you work hard, you know, you can one day be in the first team for West Ham, playing in front of all the fans. Absolutely, you don't have to tell them. It's, it's you know it's everywhere. You know it's well documented the the amount of academy players that have made first team debuts. Um, and you look obviously the Europa Cup game when you know we had we had what was it eight uh, eight academy plus, um, uh, eight academy players in the first team squad and playing, and that's that that only bodes well for what the academy. But that's a that's something that's not just happened overnight. It's not through luck. Um, there's been a lot of hard work over over a number of years to get players in a position so that the first team manager um, can trust him players to go into his first team. So you know, again, if you're ever looking, uh, all all young players want want is an opportunity, uh, is, is to see a pathway and then an opportunity. 
Um, yeah. And I, th I think the club are doing that and have done that really well um, because you've got to be good. You, there's no getting away with it. You've got to be a good footballer now um, in many aspects of the game to, to be able to go and make a first-team appearance. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned earlier in the interview that there's nothing better than going and see a kid grow from the under nines to go on into the under 16s, under 18s, under 23s and in the first team. But also there's a downside because there are a lot of kids that do get released and, and don't make it. I mean, that's got to be one of the hardest parts of your job, isn't it? It is. It's tough and um, because you see their dreams. But I think the academies now, how they run, are, are in a lot healthier place. I think there's a lot of player care that goes on. Um, and there's a lot of exit strategies for, for players that leave the, the, the academy at, at whatever age. Um, so, you know, it's not a case of, look, we're not signing you and we're not going to continue with you. You know, good luck on your journey. Uh, you know, there's there's plenty of people in place that check up, that put, put them in the right direction. But also while they're with us, I think it's not, yes, we've obviously got players that have gone through into the first team, but like you say, there's a number of players that have left us, either gone on to gone into other clubs or have just come out come out of football and gone into another career pathway. Um, but through the the time spent with them and the review process, you know, the the players shouldn't be released and it become a shock. Um, it's over a period of time, so there's a thought process behind it, and you know, you won't get that. Boys and parents shouldn't be shocked if if they get released because that information has been uh, put through to them over a, over a period of a season so and and sometimes two seasons so yeah. uh, you know it's it's the bad old days of of just getting rid of just having players in and getting them out and just having this conveyor belt uh, with no care as as long gone and i've got to say in the time i've w w it was really good at my previous club like you say at millwall and and no different here um, I think that the club do a, a really good job on on that and and looking after the players' welfare, whether they whether they're with us or whether they leave us. No, that's that's brilliant to hear, mate. Because especially in in today's age, you know, a lot with even from a young age, you know, mental health. And if someone gets released, absolutely, and think, you know, you think, oh, I'm not going to make it as a football player. But you know, it's great to hear, mate, that you have that sort of strategy in place. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned, um, seven of our youngsters got an opportunity to play in a European Europa League qu qu group game. I mean, what a night that was. I know we was already qualified, um, but for them youngsters to go out and play in front of 60,000 people in a European competition, I mean, it was, it gave me goosebumps that night, I'll be honest, because I was so proud. And and not only that, to have Mark Noble as captain that night, uh, to have them youngsters around him, five started and, and two come on. But yeah, what a night that must have been for them. Yeah, and again, you think of all the people that they that have helped get them boys into that position. Um, you know, people that have worked here for over a long, long period, um, and they've all had a touch on and influenced that player. Um, so through his through you know the phases and the age groups, and and again to get to a point where you've got a first team manager that is happy to put these players in, it wasn't a giveaway. They're not just they won't just throw away appearances. You know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I know that the manager wouldn't have done that. It's, you know, they they warranted that. It, it came at a good time. Like you say, we had qualified, but he didn't have to play them. Um, no. Had plenty of senior players to play, but no, he went with them. And again, what was nice is that they not just played, but they all performed to a really good level so that you know that actually if you, they need to be called on again, which some of them have been, they, they're not going to let the club down. I think if I remember rightly, I think Longello got man the match that night as well. So that, that just shows you. I mean, they done us proud. We lost 1-0. I mean, look, it was a great goal by Zagreb. They're an experience. Yeah. They had to win the game. But th them youngsters done us proud. I mean, uh, Steve Potts' boy come on as well that night. I mean, That's right. yeah, unbelievable. Well, I mean, as, I mean, you've you've got you've got um a son who's is he still at Arsenal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, he's under sixteen, so going into scholars next next year. But yeah, he's 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 been at Arsenal since sort of under eight, under nine. Mm. But for for Stevie Stevie Potts to see his boy come on, that I mean, he must. Oh, have been, it's, it's a dream, isn't it? It's what you're fantastic. dreaming. Fantastic, yeah, and that's what it's all about. It's, it's it's having them dreams, and I'm sure that you know all them boys had a dream when they first came into the club, or when they first started playing. Um, you know, to 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 have them the sort of nights. 
and hopefully what what's that's given them and i'm sure it has is that desire to they want more now um so they need they know that okay they're not going to be playing every week but when they go back into the under 23s under 18s then they know that they've got to perform and they will do uh, because that's the sort of characters them players are um and who knows where their where their future holds you know they they by the at the moment, they've all got a really bright future ahead of them, and hopefully, it's a it's a West Ham. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned there. I mean, especially this season, you know, Declan Rice, uh, Ben Johnson, and obviously Mark Noble uh, coming up to retirement. I mean, as I said, these youngsters, even from your age group, even to up to under twenty threes, they all look um, look at these players as role models. Um, Mark Noble, obviously retiring this season. I mean, what a career he's had to see him come through. Uh, the youngsters at West Ham to go on and play over 500 games in the first team. Um, it's amazing. He's going he's to be missed. Oh, massively. Listen, he's, um, you know, his boys in the academy. So he comes up on the nights and <clears throat> straight away bounces into the coach's room. And, you know, everyone loves to see him. He's got a great way about him. Really cares, um, you know, cares about everybody within the club. And the more I hear of, of you know, things that he does within within the club, that involves everyone, um, you know, like you say, he will be a massive miss, not just on the pitch. Everybody knows how good he is on the pitch and what he's, how he's performed over a long period of time. Um, but maybe not, people aren't maybe as, as knowledgeable of what the, the stuff he does off the pitch. Um, he's well thought of. Uh, and like I say, I'm sure that there's a role for him somewhere within the club uh, in wherever direction he wants to go. Um, but like you say, he will be a big loss Definitely on the pitch anyway when he when he retires at the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to miss him, mate. I, lo I love Nobes. He's, he's been a great servant for the club. And as you said, you do hear things that he does off the pitch and they go unnoticed sometimes. But yeah. could you maybe see him getting into a, a coaching role with the youngsters? I don't know. I, I, don't know, I don't know Nobes well enough to, to know what his plans are and, and where he sees it. Um, I think wherever he, whatever role he would do at, at West Ham, you know that he's going to do a good job at it, uh, but it will have to be right for him. Uh, and if that's if that's coaching kids, brilliant. Um, you know, you know that he'll he'll have the instant respect, and I know he'd love doing it. Um, if it's not, if it's a more um, away from the from actually out onto the grass, then I'm sure he'll be he'll be just as good as at that. But I'm sure there'll be there'll be plenty of positions that um, that would be available. Uh, for Noves to, to obviously keep him within the club because I think over the years you see at other clubs and, and also here, you know, people like that don't come around very often yeah. uh, and to have a sort of a one club player still be so involved in the club with so much and have so much respect, then it would be a big loss if he was suddenly walked out the door and you, and you didn't see him again. Yeah, totally agree, mate. Totally agree. But look, Kenny, just before I let you go, mate, because I know I can see you're at the training ground now. So thank you so much for giving up your time tonight. Um, no I just problem. Want to talk a little bit about the current West Ham. Um, great season so far. Last 16 in the Europa League, still in the FA Cup, fifth in the Premier League. I find it hard to see why fa some fans are moaning, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they need to give their head a wobble. Uh, how can you? How can you actually? You know. This season has been fantastic. You know, I've, I'm lucky enough to be an ambassador on match day. So uh, I'm fortunate to have been at every home game. Um, the atmosphere around the place, um, that real, um, you know, supporters are going in, even us as ex-players are going in um, with a real um, anticipation that we're going to we're going to win today. There's, there's a real um, feeling. There's a, um, there's a, it's a case of, you know, They've got to such a good place now. Um, yeah, there's going to be hiccups. We're going to lose games. So what? You know, that's that is that's it's such a tough league. Um, but if anyone's complaining at the moment, um, you've only got to look at what it was like. You know, eighteen months ago, two years ago, uh, and for a long period of time, um, when it was a little bit poisonous over there, and you didn't. A lot of people just you didn't really want to go. Uh, when now, I've, my phone doesn't stop at weekends, you know, any chance of getting some tickets for a, for a home game. Suddenly, people want to go to the games because they know that, one, they're getting entertained. But, again, the club's on the up. They've got the, they've got the club in a really healthy position. Um, 
and no better than the first team. You know, they're in it, they're in it, like you say. We're in we're in two cup competitions. We're healthy in the league. There's so much to play for, um, and it's, it, it lines up for an, it, it's sort of an exciting second second half of the season. Yeah, definitely. I know there's a lot of um, people as well saying about the transfers. We, I'm not going to press you on any transfers or anything, but um, to to try to get a couple of bodies in just before the transfer window. Uh, the squad we've got already is is good. It's been going well. And, you know, as you said, we can have a great second half of the season and hopefully have that massive European night in Seville in May. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, how good would that be? Oh, don't, mate. Get, every time I talk about that, I just think, I know there's a long way to go, but just to think the last 16 in the Europa League, we could host someone like Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund at home, Napoli. Right. It's, it's mental. And as you said, 18 months ago, we was trying to stay at the bottom three. And now yeah. look at us. Yeah, well, exactly that, and you know, football does that does that to you, and um, you know, you think there's it's been a it's been a long time coming that 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 you know the club are in this position. Enjoy it, you know. Don't these they don't stay they don't hang around. We're not going to suddenly, you know, be in the top four for the next ten years. Uh, that doesn't happen. But what will happen is that you're going to get nights like this, and um, you know, and situations like this where. Um, you're looking forward to games. You're looking forward with anticipation of what the next game, what the next round's going to hold, where we're going to finish in the league. Um, I just think that what's really nice is that we're really competitive. Whenever any team now comes to comes to the London Stadium, or even play West Ham, you know, at their own place, they know that they're going to be in for a game. And I think both that's both physically um, and and technically. You know, we're up there, and I, I love the way we play. We play on the front foot, and uh, it's it's not easy to play against. So that's for me as a one working in the club, but also as a, as a fan. Um, I love the way we play, and I love that we are competitive now uh, against whoever. Yeah, definitely, and and, and I think it, I mean it comes down to David Moyes as well. But I think the backroom staff he's got there as well are unbelievable. You know, getting players like uh, players. I wish they were uh, ex players like um, Stuart Pearce. You know. Kevin Nolan to have them around the changing room, you absolutely. know, it, it must give them such a lift. Yeah, ab- absolutely, brilliant, and you know, fair play to them. They, you know, the and all you hear about this, they, they've got a really happy camp. It's not easy, you know, having having squads and, and players not playing, top players not not involved to keep them happy. You don't hear of any anyone anyone who's who's not happy, um, and you see them when they do come on. They tend to uh, at least they give everything. And they're they're very much part of a squad that's that's in a healthy place, in a good place, uh, and that's down to the the management of them and the man managing of like you say of the of the manager and his backroom staff is is top draw. Yeah, no, definitely, mate. Um, we're coming up, it's the uh, FA Cup fourth round. West Ham are playing Kidderminster away. I've just I see earlier they put on their Twitter they've sold out their allocation. That's going to be a proper FA Cup. That's what the magic of the FA Cups about, isn't it? When the big yeah, teams of course the lower league teams, hundred percent. That's what it is, and you know, I know that they'll they'll be they'll be can't wait for us to you know to rock up there. It's a great opportunity for us to progress. It's, it's you know, yeah, it's it's um it's a big game for them, but but for us, it's another it's another opportunity to to win uh, and to go through into the next round and keep us in that competition. Um, you know, keep it rolling. We know the, you know, the, the European games aren't aren't going to aren't till March, I believe. So yeah. let's just keep bubbling along. Let's that one's been put put to put to bed at the moment. Um, got, obviously, got really important league fixtures to to deal with, and and like you say, this FA Cup game. But it's what it's all about, and you know, I'm sure it's going to be a full house. Obviously, we we're, we're going to we'll fill out our end, um, but I can't see anything other than a than another win, and then. We'll all look at what number ball we are for the next round. I mean, you you played for West Ham during the nineties, so I'm going to say, have you you got any uh, good or bad memories of the FA Cup? I <laughs> little uh, yeah, oh god, yeah, M- mostly yeah, mostly bad. But we, <laughs> we were talking about it the other day, and it I think it was the Farnborough game when we were drawn away uh, to Farnborough, um, but the fixture got switched to the home to to Upton Park. Uh, and we drew nil nil. You can imagine what what sort of game that was. So then the replay, and again, obviously it was, but it was at Upton Park because it was a home fixture for us. Then I don't think we. I think Trevor Morley scored in something like the 88th minute to win one nil. I mean, it was a horrendous two games. 
Um, and no disrespect to because they were obviously you know they were non-league, and, um, and we were in the we were in the what is now the Premier League, um, and it should never have gone to two legs. But that's how close we were to going out. I was part of the squad that went up to Wrexham, um, and again and and also Kidderminster. I remember playing there. Uh, well, again, I, I think I believe I was on the bench there. Or I was in the squad. Um, when the last time we played there, and, and I think Lee Chapman scored, um, I thought we we won there. So yeah, them European, them uh, FA Cup games are special. Obviously, my probably best memory is is scoring at Wickham. Um, I believe that was the third round tie when we weren't going very well in the league. They were flying under Martin O'Neill, and all the camera they made it a, a TV game because there was going to be a big upset, but. We ended up winning 2-0. Um, I think uh, myself and TC scored. Uh, and so we went through on that on that occasion. But yeah, you never know. You can't you can't, you know, take things for granted. But I think we've definitely got enough uh, enough in the squad to go there and win anyway. Yeah, I mean oh lights out there. No, the lights are yeah, they're on a timer. <laughs> um yeah, look, just um quickly, mate, before you go, um obviously um, the news come out this week about... Uh, do you want to go and switch the lights on? Yeah, two seconds. Go on, mate. Go on, go on. <laughs> there you that's go. Colour than that. He's trying to save money, <laughs> look. <laughs> um, just quickly, mate, um, before we go, we all uh, see the news earlier this week that young Isla Caton sadly passed away. I mean... I know you've been involved in many um, charity nights and events for Isla. Uh, I mean, devastating, such as tragic news. Yeah, it was, you know, again, it was news that you didn't want to see. Um, obviously saw it saw it when I picked up my phone. And, um, you know, it just shows how many people have, have sort of responded to it. I mean, you know, again, my, I looked, and which was lovely as well, is, you know, from all, all walks of life, from all over the world, um, you know, Isla connected to people, um, and I look at you know uh, the the rivalry between obviously Millwall and West Ham, um, but they really come together over over you know over Isla over the years, and um, I just think it's you know for someone for for someone to what she went through, but for someone to actually bring so many people sort of together, it just shows what sort of what sort of girl she was we've we've done events we played uh, charity games and they're full up they you know she just captured everyone's hearts and so obviously it was it, it was um it was heartbreaking to hear the news um but again it's a celebration you know we've there's there's a celebration of her life because that's the sort of girl she was and i know the family are, are keen for that to you know, for her to be remembered in the right way. So, um, you know, I'm sure it will be a, a celebration of her life. Um, but she she leaves with with definitely in our hearts and, and obviously in our thoughts. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you was part of two of the charity games. I was part of the second one. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to play alongside yourself and all the other ex-players that turned out. They, Julian Dix, my hero, um, was the manager that day. Um, and I was talking about it yesterday and I was thinking to myself, as much as when people say to me, I say to people, you know, that was one of the greatest days of my life. I wish that game never happened, you know, because yeah. it, it only happened because Isla is suffering, was suffering, yeah. you know, and I wish, and uh, it's so, you know, I'm quite close to some of the family members and I, like yourself, I looked at my phone and it was just devastating news. And uh, as you said, though, mate, Isla's smile will always be in our thoughts. You know, I'm sure the club will, will, uh, show their respect in the next uh, home game. And, um, yeah, you know, Isla's memory will always live on. Yeah, absolutely. Great words. And like you say, that it, it, it just affected so many people. But you see the people that, that are commenting on, you know, on the news. And it, it's, it's actually heartwarming mm. to know that, you know, that, that that sort of affection. And many of these people never got the opportunity to see Isla. Um, and again, you look at the family, how strong they've been over the years. Um, and again, in the way that they've they've uh, conducted themselves, in obviously in really difficult uh, circumstances over a long period of time. 
but you know we've met them and we've been in their in their company and again they 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 never looking they weren't weren't ever looking for pity they weren't ever looking for for anything other than um sharing the love that they had for for their daughter um and it, it, she was a special she's a special little girl and uh yeah really sad news uh but like you said i'm sure the club will will act uh, in the correct way and, and remember her how she was yeah definitely mate great words there mate but kenny listen mate Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I really enjoyed this conversation. It was something different. I, I like it's good to hear about uh, the youngsters and that. I'm so glad you're back at the club. You're back home, uh, and hopefully, mate, we can meet up soon and uh, uh, have a beer together or something. Look forward to it, good. top man. Appreciate you uh, asking me on. Now, nah, top, top. Thanks so much, mate. Kenny, as always, mate. How we end the show? One thing left to say: Come on, you irons! <laughs> Come on, you irons! Go, you irons! <laughs>